What is a load balancer? If you know anything about software architecture, you've probably heard this term before. You might even know that it's some sort of service that sits between two other services to direct network traffic. Let's take a little bit of a deeper look. This is the story of how a bustling online marketplace called E-Town Concrete gained immense popularity. It offered a wide variety of construction materials ordered on their site and shipped directly to your construction site. However, its success came with a challenge as more visitors flocked to the website, the servers that powered the marketplace Place were struggling to keep up with the increasing demand. The software engineers at E-Town Concrete found themselves facing a problem. How to ensure that every customer's experience on the site was smooth even during peak shopping seasons. They knew that relying on a single server was no longer feasible as it would quickly become overwhelmed with the sheer number of requests. The engineers knew that one way to improve the performance of the server was to distribute the incoming network traffic among multiple servers instead. So they came up with a system that could distribute the incoming web traffic across multiple servers, effectively sharing the workload and preventing any single server from being overloaded. But what's the tool that does the distributing? This is a load balancer, a thing that sits at the entrance of the server farm and acts as a gatekeeper responsible for directing incoming customer requests to the appropriate server. Now, importantly, load balancers can be implemented in various forms, including, but not limited to, software, which are typically applications running on servers or virtual machines and are more flexible and cost-effective than hardware load balancers, which are dedicated physical devices often used in data centers for high-demand applications applications, and there are also cloud load balancers, which are load balancing services offered by cloud service providers like AWS and Google. These are basically just software where Amazon writes the code instead of you writing the code. So as customers arrive and click their way into the marketplace, the load balancer performs this sort of dance where it analyzes factors like server health, current server load, the geographical location of the customer, or even predetermined algorithms like round robin or least connections. Based on this information, the load balancer can make an informed decision on which server should handle the customer's request. Ordinarily, to prevent any server from becoming overwhelmed, the load balancer distributes the incoming traffic in an even manner. It constantly keeps an eye on the server's health. If a server shows signs of struggling or becoming unavailable, the load balancer will gracefully redirect traffic away from it, preventing disruptions to the shopping experience. You might have heard of certain systems as being highly available or even of something like the CAP theorem, consistency, availability, partition tolerance. Load balancers create high availability. By distributing traffic across multiple servers, they ensure that if one server fails, the others can still handle requests, reducing downtime. Now, this is really just the tip of the iceberg of this stuff. If you enjoy this sort of systems thinking, two things I recommend you do. One is to follow me for more videos like this. Two is to read stuff like designing data intensive applications, and you can go deeper down the rabbit hole. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.